What were the top 10 weirdest dinosaurs in the world? Let's fossil it out. So you're probably asking, how can dinosaurs get any weirder? They're already giant killer chickens, but stick with me here as we dive into these deadly, diabolically strange dinosaurs. <laughs> Meet insides of Asaurus. Yes, this dinosaur does have buck teeth. Now, one of the traditional ways to tell a mammal from a reptile is their teeth. Mammals generally have many different kinds, while usually reptiles only have one. However, this intriguing reptile had these big incisor-like teeth growing down from its top jaw and rows of smaller, flatter teeth in the back, suggesting an omnivorous or herbivorous diet, which is pretty interesting considering its carnivorous ancestor Oviraptor. Incise of Osaurus was truly the Easter Bunny of dinosaurs. <laughs> Now, Tyrannosaurus rex really seems to steal the spotlight, but since the Jurassic, there have been tons of different types of Tyrannosaur. Like its odd and slightly unexplainable cousin, Chongosaurus, scientifically known as Pinocchio rex. <laughs> Unearthed in a Chinese construction site, this 66 million year old monster had quite the schnoz, with a snout 35% longer than other dinosaurs of its size. A similarly impressive snoot was found on Alioramus, a similar Tyrannosaur, which means that these long-nosed reptiles were probably a pretty powerful group hunting through what's now Asia millions of years ago. Speaking of hunting, Chongosaurus possessed thinner teeth and a lighter skeleton than its movie star cousin, suggesting a diet of smaller lizards and feathered dinosaurs. <laughs> Ever wondered what would happen if you stuck a vacuum cleaner on the neck of a giraffe and called it a dinosaur? First of all, why are you wondering this? Second of all, you'd be describing Nigrosaurus. This bizarre sauropod lived about 110 million years ago in what's now Niger, Africa. I know, big surprise, right? It had this flat, broad face with more than 500 tiny teeth, a dentist's nightmare. After French paleontologist Philip Tiki's expedition first found it, Nigrosaurus truly began to be understood after Paul Serino's team discovered that its swiffer duster-like jaw sucked up low-lying vegetation. In Serino's words, it's the dinosaurian equivalent of a cow. <laughs> Those relatives of T-Rex? Well, this just might be the weirdest. Say hello to you, Tyrannus, a fabulously feathered dinosaur to whom I've given the nickname Chicken McRex. National Geographic's Care Thon described you, Tyrannus, as a quote, fluffy and fierce dinosaur. This fuzzbutt lived about 125 million years ago, long before T-Rex hit the scene. Both were part of a group called theropods, who had hollow bones, three main fingers with two mini fingers on their hand, and three main toes with two mini toes on their feet as well. Most had sharp teeth and claws to tear into their prey faster than my dad into a turkey leg on Thanksgiving. And that's saying something. But here's the thing. Before you, Tyrannus, we knew that some theropods had feathers, but we really only found them on smaller species. Think the size of a middle schooler instead of a school bus. But you, Tyrannus, changed everything. At 30 feet, 9 meters long, this chicken little wasn't so small. It may have been only about a fifth of the weight of T-Rex, but still about 40 times heavier than what we thought was the largest feathered dinosaur. But just because this friendly fluffball had feathers does not mean it could fly. These were little proto-feathers, only about 7 inches or 17 centimeters long, more fluff than feathers, and this is further evidence to the fact that T-Rex had them as well. Paleontologists believe they helped keep this one-ton Tyrannosaur cozy and warm. Though my scientific theory is that they were to assist this apex predator in attaining the best snuggles. <laughs> Ever wondered what a demonic ostrich looks like? Let me introduce you to... Gigantoraptor. This peculiar parrot stood 16 feet, 5 meters tall, weighing 1.5 tons, 1,400 kilograms. Discovered by paleontologist Xing Shu of the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology in Beijing, this dizzying dinosaur had no teeth, instead a massive beak 
beamed out from its face. This categorizes Gigantoraptor into the Oviraptorosauria group, which has traditionally had only small feathered dinosaurs, not this behemoth bird. Living about 65 million years ago, it is the largest beaked dinosaur ever found. This is wild because it totally complicates our understanding of how a certain branch of dinosaurs evolved into birds. We basically used to think that as this group of dinosaurs got smaller and smaller, that's when they became more bird-like, like Archaeopteryx, a tiny transitional creature which was heralded as the missing link between dinosaurs and birds, as seen in the second to last spot on this cladogram. This massive monster of the Cretaceous forces us to reassess our original hypothesis, which means that this prehistoric parakeet is further proof to the fact that large dinos still sported an impressive array of bird-like features, including beaks and feathers. <laughs> Meet the puny pincushion of dinosaurs. Pegomastax. This baffling buddy thrived in the Jurassic as part of a group called Heterodontosauridae, very basal ornithischian herbivores. Lots of big words there, so let's break it down. An herbivore doesn't eat meat, only plants, and a basal animal is one that's pretty primitive. As for ornithischian dinosaurs, they translate to quote-unquote bird-hipped dinosaurs, like Stegosaurus and Triceratops, with a unique pelvic bone very different from the other branch of dinosaurs known as Saurischians, or quote-unquote lizard-hipped dinosaurs, like T. rex and Diplodocus. Taking into account the fact that all these categories are being challenged and reevaluated regularly. Fun fact! Birds are actually more closely related to quote-unquote lizard-hipped dinosaurs than to bird-hipped dinosaurs. Weird, right? Exciting scientific tangent aside, let's get to the ten-ton elephant in the room. This demonic dinosaur had spines. Truly a prehistoric porcupine, Pegomastax was skewered with spikes all over its body. But sorry to burst your bubble, these were technically primitive feathers and did not ancient shish kebabs. Although to add even more eccentricities, Pegomastax did have a beak. What a wonderful weirdo! <laughs> how scary it would be to be in a bullfight? Well, now imagine the bull has 62 razor-sharp teeth and can run at 56 kilometers 35 miles per hour, faster than T-Rex with two massive spikes of bone sticking out of its head. Entering from stage left, Carnotaurus. This bizarre baddie lived 70 million years ago and measured about 25 feet 7 and a half meters long. As for that huge horned noggin, some scientists suppose it may have been used to headbutt. Despite these gigantic growths, Carnotaurus actually had arms smaller than T-Rex, even smaller than us humans. Speaking of T-Rex, this Cretaceous creature Carnotaurus looks very similar to its famous friend, but actually they're quite distant relatives. To close off on this incredible acquaintance, I'll leave you with the fact that Carnotaurus means meat-eating bull. And speaking of facts... Is it a comb? Is it an inverted mop? Is it a four-year-old drawing of a lizard that went terribly, horribly wrong? No, it's Longus Schema. Now this little reptile was not a dinosaur. It was just so weird. I had to include it. This fun-sized friend lived right before the dinosaurs first set foot on Earth in the Triassic about 235 million years ago. Those prodigious popsicle sticks on its back are actually quite similar to feathers. This little buddy giving them a test drive before dinosaurs really hit the scene. Because of these eccentric extremities, paleontologists once believed that long schema could glide from tree to tree in its Triassic habitat. But now with more research, scientists think they were probably for display rather than anything else. Show-offs. <laughs> Wouldn't it be the coolest to ride a dinosaur? What about one that flies thousands of feet above the ground? Well, that's all possible with Quetzalcoatlus, because this giant of the sky was roughly the size of an Aronka 11 chief airplane. That's right, Quetzalcoatlus had a 35 foot, 10 and a half meter wingspan, part of a group of monstrously massive pterosaurs called Asdarkids. Standing up, it was about 18 feet, five and a half meters tall, as large as a huge bull giraffe, so it's no surprise that it was named after a spectacularly strong serpentine Aztec god known as Quetzalcoatl. It even ate baby dinos for breakfast. Now I do have a disclaimer about this dangerous dinosaur. It wasn't a dinosaur. Though pterosaurs are related to our favorite movie monsters, it's just so cool! Had to include it. <laughs> 
thought what Edward Scissorhands would look like as a dinosaur? Well, I'm sure it would look a lot like Therizinosaurus. These are its hands, equipped with massive monster claws, the biggest in the entire animal kingdom. These talons look like they belong to the absolute apex predator of the Cretaceous, able to turn all enemies into mincemeat, ruler of the raptors, emperor of the ancient, monarch of the Mesozoic era! Except it was basically just a giraffe, but a really weird one. This animal was actually a pretty chill herbivore who probably used its claws to protect itself from predators such as Tarbosaurus, a big old tyrannosaur. So don't judge a claw by its cover. What is that? Just, what is that? Well, to answer you, Helen, that's Dinocharis. Yes, it does look like a cross between a colossal camel and a very confused platypus, but this was, in fact, a real dinosaur. Similar to Therizinosaurus, Dinocharis's arms were thought to belong to a mysteriously massive monster when unearthed back in the 1960s, until a complete specimen of this wild creature was finally found in the early 2010s. This dinosaur actually swallowed stones, which were found inside the fossil upon discovery. This isn't as strange as it sounds, though. Many famous dinosaurs, such as Brachiosaurus, chopped up gastroliths, stones that helped them grind up tough food inside their bodies. So maybe Dinocharis isn't as outlandish after all. So there you have it. Ten terrifyingly odd dinosaurs. If you thought the video was cool or hopefully weird today, please like and subscribe, and as we say in the Cretaceous, Stay roarsome.